Well, first of all, I think the transition is smooth. Uh, the real question will be the next transition because there's a whole lot of uh, people that are would be in competition and they have an interesting way of choosing the next leader. But this one uh, is uh, it will be in keeping with the uh, with the Saudi policies towards us and the region. Look, the Saudis are more frightened, and I am more concerned about the rise of ISIS and the and even more the uh, incursions of Iran into different countries. Right now Iran has significant influence in Iraq, Syria, uh, Lebanon, uh, Yemen now they are uh, they're, they're, they're sponsoring a, this Houthis who have basically taken over the governance of the country and so they're very worried and I am worried too and frankly they, they perceive a lack of strong American leadership. What, what should we be doing at this point that you think we're not? <laughs> I, I, we haven't got time on the program, but let me begin <clears throat> by saying that we should arm the Free Syrian Army. We should uh, have a more American boots on the ground in Iraq and Syria in the form of forward air controllers, uh, intelligence capabilities, special forces, uh, others. Uh, we should be uh, understanding that this is one uh, fight, not two separate ones between Iraq and Syria, uh, where we seem to have two different uh, strategies. And finally, we shouldn't be training young men in Saudi Arabia as we are and sending them in to Syria to be barrel bombed uh, by Bashar Assad. There's a delusion that somehow we're going to have an agreement with Iran, it's nuclear agreement, then we're all going to be working together. The, the Iranians are on the march in the Middle East. Check out our sponsor, ProPureUSA.com. That's ProPureUSA.com, the leading innovator in water filtration systems. Get all of your water filters at ProPureUSA.com. Click the link below right now. Good morning. Good morning. Good morning. Adieu. Welcome to AMTV, alternative media television. I'm your host, Christopher Green. And you know, these are really interesting times. Some people would argue that this is end times. It's the end of the road for America, for the Federal Reserve, uh, really for that entire system, for the global economy. You know, the trade of the petrodollar, this long-standing dominance of the West post-World War II has all been kind of flipped upside down. It's a inverted pyramid. Basically, the heavy part is up here now, and it's putting pressure on that top tippy top of bailouts and super leveraged hedge fund managers borrowing at 0% from the Fed's open window. All those people at, to at the top not getting their fair share, being raped by the Federal Reserve right now with 0% interest rates, hurting savers, hurting the good, honest, hard workers here in the United States that are, by the way, and you're paying for the bailouts, paying with their children's future and their children's, children's, children's future. All of this is inverted and it's weighing down on the elite. It's exactly why this was the main topic of discussion in Davos, Switzerland, where you could buy a $45 hot dog uh, just earlier in the week. Hedge fund managers talking about they're so afraid of this wealth gap, this income inequality, the fact that just a couple of dudes own over half the world's wealth, they're so fearful of it that they're actually buying retreats, private retreats, where they can fly their Learjets in case of an emergency, uprising of sorts, either here in America or Europe or anywhere else for that matter, and retreat uh, to places like New Zealand at their private estate. They're very worried about this, just like they talked about five years ago, how social media, which you're tuning into right now, which by the way reaches over a quarter million people a day, millions and millions and millions of viewers a month, just how they warned about that roughly five or six years ago, they're now very worried about the wealth gap, this income inequality, and the eventuality of a revolution of, of a lot of very, very angry people. Again, everybody squeezed up here at the top, basically all the slaves putting pressure down on the 0.001% that receive trillion dollar bailouts, that receive the benefits of quantitative easing. 
uh, inflated asset prices. Again, it's not helping anybody up here. It's only helping the same scumbags that caused the financial crises in the first place, that caused the economic Armageddon that made up 2008, 2009, that caused a wave of bankruptcies, of foreclosures, of short sales, et cetera. Again, everybody up here getting screwed. Kids coming out of college with you know hundreds of thousands of dollars worth of debt can't find a job. Working minimum wage at McDonald's, wondering why they uh, took on you know $200,000 worth of student loans. It's exactly why Obama, Commander in Thief is trying to institutionalize everything. He's trying to socialize, I would argue, fascize everything. He's going to give free education now. Uh, you remember the idea behind everybody should own a house? That was a big push by Washington. Everybody should own a house. Let's just give them away for free. You know, you don't have to put money down. We'll state your assets. We'll state your income. You don't even need a job. All you need is a heartbeat, and we'll give you a loan. How well did that turn out? Well, it ended in economic Armageddon. Now Obama says he wants everybody to go to college for free. Yeah, that, that's right, it's going to be free. Of course, it's not free, we're all gonna pay for it. Uh, it's gonna create these anomalies in our market. It's gonna cost billions and billions of dollars, just like the storm they screwed up on yesterday. Remember how that was gonna wave through New York? It was gonna be the storm of the century, another Hurricane Sandy? Well, that didn't happen. What it did is shut down about, I think, five, 6,000 flights, cost our economy here in the States, roughly a billion dollars. A billion dollar boo-boo. Because a couple of meteorologists just flatly got it wrong. Just like the Federal Reserve is flatly getting it wrong now. Saying, you know, they're going to contain inflation expectations. That uh, all of this will work out. All this worthless money printing into infinity, this trillions of dollars worth of new debt, over four and a half trillion at the Federal Reserve balance sheet, over 18 trillion plus and growing at an extremely rapid exponential rate can never be paid back. This is just pure facts, mathematics, 18 plus trillion here in the United States. All of this, they say, is going to work out when it's not. It's exactly why the elite in Davos are talking about wealth inequality. They're talking about the wealth redistribution, this gap. I've talked about this personally for years. I mean, the whole 2008-09 crisis was engineered to steal money, to steal wealth. Again, the largest transfer of wealth in history just suddenly floated to the tippy top of the 0.001%'s pockets. Isn't that interesting? You know, wasn't it the kids and grandkids of all the hardworking parents of Americans? Wasn't that supposed to transfer down to them? You know, wasn't that how things were supposed to work, but it didn't happen that way. No, what we did was engineer crises. We engineered bailouts. We were sold the lie that the world was gonna come to an end. Remember George W. Bush, the world was gonna come to an end. That's why we had to bail out all the banks, bail out these billionaires. They needed more money. Not you, we'll take your house into foreclosure and short sale. We'll break, bank, bankrupt your business while we pad the pockets of Richard Branson. You know, I'm just using him as a random example. The guy doesn't need any more money. He already owns an island. He already has a fleet of jets, etc. These bankers don't need any more bailouts. If anything, we should be pickpocketing their pockets. You know, I want to make something clear here for my audience, if you don't already know. Those of you that tuned in for years know. I'm a capitalist, baby. I'm a capitalist. I'm an American. I'm pro-freedom. I'm pro the fundamentals and principles that have made this country great over the past few hundred years before we screwed it up. Okay? I'm not a socialist. I don't think we should redistribute all the wealth to everybody. It should just be some lollipop gumdrop world. But it's exactly what Obama is doing. Not for the people though. Not for the masses. He's doing it for the elite. They're transferring all the wealth to the tippy top before revolution. And there's a reason for it. There will inevitably be more civil unrest. There will be an uprising, not just what we've already seen in Europe or the engineered Arab Spring, courtesy of the West, but also here in the United States of America. You know, a lot of this is driven by technology, this technological age, this what arguably is the second industrial revolution. Uh, the development of artificial intelligence. Computers, for every new job that technology creates, it destroys 10, maybe more. It's why wages are being pressed and pressured lower. It's why kids are coming out of college with hundreds of thousands of dollars of engineered debt, thanks to the banks and thanks to the crony debt leverage Ponzi scheme system, can't find work. They're slinging hamburgers over at McDonald's so people can get cancer a little quicker.
There's a reason for all this. It's exactly why the Federal Reserve is really fighting deflation. The devil is in the D word. That's what the Fed is really fighting. A lot of this has to do with the technological age. Again, this technological innovation that's destroying jobs. We have too much supply, it appears, of everything. We have too much supply of oil. For example, let's say Apple got a new order for a billion more iPads or iPhones in China. You think they could do it? Sure. Of course, they reported a net profit last quarter, the greatest we've seen in really the history of the world. I mean, that's kind of a perfect example of where this economy is, where it's headed, how the masses are being left behind by the tech, by the super, super geekazoids. This is what's filtering to that top 0.001%. It's why people at Davos, millionaires and billionaires, are worried. Everybody's rushing to get to the top before the inevitable inverted pyramid crumbles to the ground. And there's revolt, and there's uprising, and there's coups, and there's revolution, and there's continued depression here in the United States and around the world, exactly what we're experiencing now. Again, this deflationary environment is a nightmare for the Fed. It's actually good for the people, but it's a nightmare for the Fed because it inverts the upside down Ponzi scheme. It puts more pressure on the debt. What's writing on the books of the Federal Reserve, the $18 trillion debt, trying to service those interest payments, they all of a sudden can't do it. They're furiously trying to print money at hyper speed digitally, furiously trying to do it to weaken the currency, but the dollar keeps rising. We have all this deflationary pressure. We have too much supply. Look at oil. We've got too much of it. You know, it's funny, you've got companies like Elon Musk's Tesla that comes to market with these, you know, this new wave of technology and cars, all of a sudden oil crashes. It's like, do you really need a Tesla? I mean, you can fill up your truck, an F-250 right now for like 35 bucks. We have too much supply of everything. In fact, the only constraint, I would argue, in regards to supply is there's too much in every area. And all of this is developing in hyperspeed. The masses in the world is being left behind. And just a few people are benefiting. We see this massive dy dynamic, this stratification, this wealth gap from rich to poor. We have never seen this in history. So what do the elites do? If they know the uprising is inevitable, if they know the revolt is coming, if these billionaires that own half the wealth in the world on the planet are worried about this, they're buying retreats, private retreats in New Zealand to escape the ensuing chaos. What's coming to America, what's already, I would argue, in Europe, and coming to the world, what do they do? Do they allow the coup to take place? Do they allow the Ferguson riots on steroids compounded to overtake the White House? Do they allow the Arab Spring to take place here in the United States of America? Do they allow the second American revolution or maybe uh, a civil war or a secessionist movement from states like Texas? No. They would much prefer to send you to war. They would much prefer to go to war, let you fight and die overseas. As John McCain spoke today, I saw him on CNBC. He just got back from a plane ride to Saudi Arabia. You know, the same guy has been pictured with, you know, ISIS terrorists and then says we're at war with ISIS. He said something very interesting today, something very specific. He said, you know what? We're not at war with multiple countries. We're not at war with just Iraq or Syria. We're at war with ISIS. That's the war. He's basically laying the framework and suggesting that who cares that we're engaged in numerous illegal occupations and wars and technological wars via drone strikes. It's just one enemy now. It's ISIS. And it's an explanation and in his view a justification for an all-out regional conflict and war in the Middle East today. A regional <laughs> nuclear event. Absolutely crazy. That's Washington's justification. So make no doubt about it, folks. They're going to send you to war. They're going to urge you right when this upside down Ponzi scheme crumbles, when the revolution really begins to take hold, people's blood beginning to boil, 
As it becomes more readily apparent this year in 2015 and 2016 that we're just living through the greatest of great depressions, that's when we'll all be conveniently fighting a common enemy. They're already laying the framework for it now with ISIS, the new boogeyman, the new Al-Qaeda. Of course, they won't be fighting a war. They'll be in New Zealand at their private retreat. Obama will be flying Air Force One during his third term. But he'll ask you, the American people, to go fight Chris Kyle's war, where Chris Kyle left off. You know, an American hero that just guns down hundreds of people by pulling the trigger. You know, I don't know if I'd call that being a hero. You know, isn't it funny how murder's cool in war? It's like, oh yeah, murder's fine, yeah. Kill as many people as you want. The more people you gun down, the better. Ha <laughs> ha, they'll even make a movie about you, even though it's just a propaganda film to rein in the masses and the promotion of this fight against ISIS in these wars overseas. But do it in civilian life, they'll send you to jail. I mean, hey, it's illegal. You can't do that, you're a criminal. You're like, uh, you're an ax murderer. You're you're Frankenstein, Freddy Krueger, if you do it in civilian life. But it's cool. It's cool in the context of war. If you're fighting the boogeyman, if you're fighting ISIS, Al-Qaeda, Al-Qaeda Arabian Peninsula, ISIL, whatever new acronym they come up with on a daily basis. Again, folks, this is all pushing to war. What the Fed is really fighting right now is deflation, is an inverted pyramid, is excessive leverage, debt that can never, ever be serviced or paid back. And it's going to blow up in all their faces. But they're going to send you to war. You, your children, and your children's children will die fighting these people's war so they can profit. So they can ride off into the sunset. So they can benefit from future bailouts. And this scheme that even the mainstream calls a scheme that makes up QE, quantitative easing to infinity. It really just is a raping of the country, a raping of America, a raping of Europe. And it's all happening right in front of us, right in front of you. I'm Christopher Green. Get this video out everywhere. Make it viral, hard hitting it in your face, and click the link below to support our sponsor. Psst. And if you're wondering, why I had that weird piece of white strip on my neck that entire video, which I just picked up on and noticed myself, is because I cut myself shaving and just forgot to take it off.